Hello and welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Lab video series. I'm going to be walking through each of the major labs of the Cisco CyberOps Associate Netacad curriculum. So let's go and let's jump on in. Alright, so here we're doing lab 926 using Wireshark to observe the TCP through a handshake. So let's get in our VM and let's see what we can do. So we're going to be going ahead and getting into our VM. All right, so why are you? All right, sorry about that. It was froze for a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get in to our VM, CyberOps. All right, so again, my instructions are off to the side. So we have three main parts, preparing the host for capture, analyzing the capture and then using TCP dump for this. So first thing we want to do is get in. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in my terminal. We need to set up mini nets. So do keep in mind that our topologies in mini net may be different. So check. So let's go ahead and get our sudo lab support files. I hit tab. So I'll do a C, hit tab, cyber ops, to, and I will load my Python script that sets up my VMs, or so my virtual mini nets, cyber ops, that loaded up my environment, our host 1234, our switch, and our router. We will be setting up and using S term H1 and X term H2 or sorry H4 X term H4 all right there we go we have our term uh, our host 1 and our host 4 set up one of the things we need to do on H4 that's going to act like our web server we need to set up and turn on our web server. So we will do slash home analyst lab support files scripts reg. All right, so that now starts my web server on H4. What I will do from there is I'm going to navigate from H1 using a, a web browser. So Firefox, Firefox, ampersand. You cannot run Firefox from a root user, even if you do the space ampersand. Again, you're going to get a no. That's not allowed. So we need to switch users. So SU, analyst. Our prompt now yellow. That's just letting us know that that user is analyst. Firefox ampersand. Now we're loading up our Firefox as the analysts. So the process and permissions and rights are all under the analyst, not a root user. So that starts part of it. Next thing is on H1, we want to capture a count of 50 packets that we want to save as capture.pk. So what I suggest is I would pre-type in the address. Then I would click into node 1. Tap enter a few times. We're doing a sudo tcp dump tcp tcp dump hack or tack i with our interface h1 eth0 tack v we're doing a tack c for count of 50 that means we're going to capture 50 frames with a tack w and we will list where we are putting it under the analyst capture dot pcap all right so before I hit enter it says 
what you want to do is start your capture it will ask you for your user so cyber ops it's now counting now go back to your Firefox window now browse to it you may get um, a connection screen down here you may not alright so it captured 50 packets so in H1 let's open up Wireshark so Wireshark space ampersand and let's see if we can find our Brewery Handshake. So file, go to open, browse to your desktop, capture the file. If you type TCP, we should see a sin, synac, and acknowledge. So it happens to be the 42, 43, and 44 of my frames you might be different so keep that in mind so part two is all about analyzing that so we've already opened it we've already started looking through it so I'm gonna go with the first packet my sin if I expand out my transmission my relative sequence number is zero my source port is a randomized port also known as dynamic or private my port is 42370 and again that's randomized my destination port is a fixed port a registered port port 80 and that's used for http based traffic the source ports are typically randomized the destination port it's when a server is listening to a specific response that's where it's going however if the server is responding to something it may use the randomized port as the return destination address alright so we've looked at the uh, TCP port that's again a well-known port what flag is set if we go down to flags we can see that our sin flag is set or synchronous flag we can also see it because that's what it says up here so what is the relative sequence number set to zero Go to f our second frame, our response, our scene act. So, our scene act, we'll have a sin and acknowledgement, both key. They'll both be there. Source port is now 80. Destination port is going to be the 42370 because it's returning back to the device that originally initiated all of it. The relative sequence number is 0 the next sequence number is 1 and the acknowledgement number is 1 the acknowledgement number is going to be 1 plus the previous sequence number or the sequence number from the device that sent the initial number finally let's do our third one that will be our acknowledge you'll notice our acknowledge flag is set and our sequence is now one. Our acknowledgement number is now one. So that's what we were expecting. So that is our three-way handshake in a nutshell. So what flag is set? Our ACK flag. So moving to part three. Viewing the packet using TCP dump. You may want to open up a new terminal window and enter man, see what happens. Man will just provide you control T man TCP dump. It will show you the manual. It will show you that you can run TCP dump filters against this. You can do the same thing with Wireshark. Wireshark has a graphics. So do some search through the man page. Uh, using the forward slash or question mark and the end to move forward and next to the uh, next page if we want to quit we can use Q search for information on the R switch what does the R switch do so you'll notice 
as you scroll, you're kind of alphabetical, let, uh, order, letter by letter, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, R, lowercase r with a file. This allows you to read the packet from a file that was saved using the W option with TCP dump or other tools such as Wireshark. All right, so in the terminal, we're gonna go ahead and in the same terminal, open a capture packet. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to quit out. I'm going to do ls. I can see my packet capture file there. So I will do tcp dump tac r home analyst capture.pcap tcp c Three. That's basically saying filter based off a of TCP and I want the first three packets. TCP. Got to spell it all correctly. There we go. So if we expand this out a little bit. Here's the first. Here's the second. Here's the third. You can see that based off of the timestamps. Here is my sequence. Here's my sequence acknowledgement. And there's my acknowledgement. So we can. It actually wants us to go back. Now about a wire shark. Go back to our mini net. Quit. Exit out. All right. So now we can also clean out the process. So I'm going to open a new tab. sudo mn tax c. We're doing this to clean up the processes. And to clean up any excess material. All right, so I'm going to go back. <laughs> I closed the wrong window. Control Shift T. I will go ahead and reopen up my TCP dump. I can see the contents. I can see the flags. I can see my sequence and acknowledgement numbers. Again, with this, I'd be doing it in Wireshark. I would not be doing it via a command terminal but TCP is dump is one tool that you can use so reflection questions there are hundreds of filters available in Wireshark a large network could have numerous filters how do you differentiate them the answer is gonna all depend on your situation it's based off of the source the destination the protocols the layer 3 the layer 4 data it just there, there's too many of them so list three filters that might be useful based off of, I want to sort off of a protocol. I want to sort via a destination IP or sort versus a source IP. All of those are filters that are kind of important. What other ways could Wireshark or TCP dump be used in a production network? You could often use these tools for security purposes for an after the fact analysis of normal traffic or after a network attack to see if there's any new protocols or services that are working on the network. All right, that is it for this chapter. Again, this was lab 926 using Wireshark to review the TCP three-way handshake. Questions or concerns, definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right, so that does it for this lab video. A few suggestions would be, one, run through the lab a second time, trying to do it by yourself. 
two, I would do a summary of kind of what you learned, where you struggled, and keep that type of journal going so that you can build off of it. Third, and finally, take time to reflect. These labs start off fairly easy and then they grow in complexity, so some of the labs you may have to redo a few times to fully grasp what's going on. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.